That's y'all don't know. We, we lie. We lie. Hey, Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, we want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashim, Rechapadash. That's all praises to the Heavenly Father. His true name in Hebrew is Yahweh. In his son's name, with the word literally called Jesus Christ, real name in Hebrew is Yahweh Shah. Also give it praises, honor, and glory unto the Yahweh Kapodash, the Holy Spirit, which is the force and entity that makes this edification possible. I want to say Shalom to all you sincere hearted Akim, Wa Akwat, that you brothers. A few sincere sisters make it by his sacrifice on a daily basis in this wicked and the Dosha generation. I also want to give double honors unto our beloved apostles and elders of the great millstone who tells his truth and who rule well. All right, we're um, with the brothers from the great uh, millstone Dallas camp. All right, coming back with you, uh, coming back to you, all right, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashima Shah on this uh, Sabbath evening. All right, to bring out another Thursday night uh, prophecy, man. All right, because that's the spirit that the Lord's, all right, true disciples, true followers will be in, all right, which is the spirit of prophecy. We're going to open up with uh, Isaiah 42, and uh, I believe it's like verse 8 or 9, all right? All right, and ultimately, all right, the Lord has left us, you know, prophecy here in these latter days, all right, um, all right, to sing as that new song, all right? And he's only given that into, into the elect, man. All right, but you got it, bro. You said 42. Yeah, 42 and uh, either 8 or 9. Okay. It says, Behold, yeah. the former things, verse 9, are come to pass. Can you start from the top again? Uh -huh. It says, Behold, the former Keep things, uh -huh. Isaiah 42 and 9, Behold, the former things are come to pass. Yeah, behold, right? That word behold means to look. Behold means to look. The former things are come to pass. What's well, some of the former things, all right, that the Heavenly Father, all right, had, uh, had prophesied has already come to pass. All right, you read the book of Daniel, the second chapter, Daniel, the seventh chapter. Are concerning particular kingdoms that's already uh, been prophesied and they came into existence and now they're out of existence. All right, such as the Assyrian uh, Babylonian captivity, the Median and Persian captivity, the Greek captivity, all right, and the ancient pagan Roman Empire captivity that all that us Israelites, particularly the southern kingdom, was under, man. All right, so that's the former things that have come to pass. All right, so these words that that the Heavenly Father. All right, has us uh, has his servants here in these latter days believing on these are faithful and true words, as it says in Second Corinthians fifteen chapter. All right, so how much more can we put our faith, all right, and uh, and reliance upon the things that he's speaking about to come uh, in the near future, man? Go ahead, bro. Uh, you, want oh, you got something else? Uh, I was going to say thank you, Second Corinthians seven. You called for. Oh, no, some more, uh, Isaiah. Okay, it's back in the book of Isaiah chapter forty-two and verse ten. It says, sing unto the Lord, Yahweh, a new song. Can you read that uh, the other verse again? Uh -huh. on that. Isaiah 42 and 8, it says, behold, the former things are come to pass, uh -huh. and new things do I declare. And that's the point. And new things do I declare. All right? So the Lord, he already declared the former things. All right? But now he's declaring those new things. Now, who's going to be all right, in charge of speaking these new things all right, that the Heavenly Father already had prophesied thousands of years ago? All right, through the hand of uh, his prophets, man, such as Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, all right, the, the, the major and minor prophets, man, which all the prophets are major, all right? They, they you know, some of the prophets have the, the title of minor prophets because they didn't have as much, you know, uh, written down. All right, but all these prophecies are major, but nonetheless, who's breaking them down and giving the sense thereof in these latter days? All right, the ones that the Heavenly Father, all right, has risen up in Babylon the Great pursuant to Jeremiah 29. He says, Behold, I will raise up prophets in Babylon. You see? And that's starting with the uh, beloved elder high priest Abba Bibbles, all right, which was Elijah to come, all right, and the men that come on down under him, all right, particularly those of us that come from one west, all right, our, our beloved apostles and elders of Great Millstone and their teachers, man, all right, and us, Akim, right, enter into their labors. We're declaring unto you the new things that the Heavenly Father all right, has already prophesied. It says, before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them, man. This is prophecy, and this is the spirit, all right, that the Lord has his men up on, his men in. Uh, in a Christian church, they're not telling you, all right, what's going to happen in the future. They're not telling you about the MOTB. They're not telling the world about uh, uh, World War III, you see? And you have some uh, uh, ladies, I can't remember, I don't know the group's name, all right, but they're, 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 they're uh, part of the Christian church, but they're over here stealing breakdowns, man. <laughs> All right, still in breakdowns from from the from the one West Israelites, particularly our apostles, man. 
and coming up as if they're, they're, they're preaching into their congregation as if all right, they, they've been toiling in these scriptures, man. Which they've just been ear hustling the prophets, man. All right, but that's all right because at the end of the day, all right, you can only fake it for so long. You know? You can only fake it for so long, man. Isaiah 42 and 10, it says, Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise from the end of the earth. Right, and that proves that these prophecies that's coming out of the, uh, that's coming out of the prophet's mouth in the last days, all right, this is that new song. That was prophesied in uh, Revelation 14 chapter. All right, can you read again? It says, Sing unto the Lord Yahweh a new song, mm -hmm. and his praise from the end of the earth, ye that go down to the sea. And really, this new song isn't all that new, because it's the same song, it's the same message that Yahweh Shah, all right, uh, gave unto his disciples 2,000 years ago. All right, so this is a pretty much is refreshed, all right, because for a long time we were without this knowledge. All right, we totally discontinued from our heritage, discontinued from knowing who our power is, knowing who we are, knowing who our enemy is, you see? So, but the Lord has revived us, all right? He's given us a little reviving in this bondage, man. All right, so this is a, that great refreshing, a great awakening, all right? That's come upon us, man. The Lord pouring those waters upon, all right, that dry ground. So now we're singing a new song, go ahead. And all that is therein, the owls and the inhabitants thereof. Yeah, the owls and the inhabitants thereof, all the islands, all right? Because you got Israelites scattered everywhere, man. You got Benjamin on, uh, you know, on the island, Jamaica, all right, Haiti, all right. You got the Levites. You got, uh, uh, you know, the uh, Dominican Republicans, which are the Simeonites, all right, Shemayawar, all right. So all the out, because October, can we get uh, October 13 and 3? All right, because you also had uh, Vocab Malone speaking about, uh, all right, he was saying, uh, 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 are there signs? I can't remember exactly how he said it, but uh, maybe one of you brothers know, um, he said, uh, can the Hebrew Israelites in the last days give signs, or does the Bible say that the Hebrew Israelites can give a sign that they're Israelites? Something along those lines. You know, I know Elias Schwami just did a video on it, and a few, a few other brothers as well. But, but the answer is yes, man. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna get into it here in a second. But you got it. Tober. Okay. Tober thirteen and three. Confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel, for he has scattered you among them. Right. Confess him before the Gentiles. Because he has scattered you among them, it makes me think about what uh <laughs> right what the, what those Jews were saying to Yahweh Shah in John the seventh chapter. Will he now go unto the Gentiles? All right, can we get that real quick? All right, because pursuant to the curses, uh, if, if that brother can get if uh Benai can get John seven, you can get Deuteronomy twenty eight and sixty four. We'll get that first, okay? Because um, this is a curse. Why are we amongst the Gentiles? <laughs> all right, we're the sons of God. All right, we're the Israelites. We're supposed to the Lord. Uh, pursuant to Deuteronomy the thirty-second chapter, all right, uh, he severed us from all other nations and gave us our own land allotment. So now, why why do we find ourselves scattered amongst all these particular heathens, man? This is a curse that we're under. You got it? Deuteronomy twenty-eight and sixty-eight and sixty-four. The, uh, slot sixty-four and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Yeah, and this is uh this this is a part of the curse. Verses uh fifteen all the way down to sixty-eight in this chapter. All right, this is the Lord giving the Israelites a laundry list of curses, all right, as to what will befall us, all right, whenever we uh, rebel against him, man. All right, so he said that the Lord will scatter us, all right, diaspora, all right, in the Greek. Go ahead. From the one end of the earth even unto the other. Uh -huh. And there, shall, there thou shalt serve other gods. And there you're going to serve other gods, man. We see Jake caught up in all different types of idolatrous practices, man, knowingly and unknowingly. All right, Christianity. Right, Islam, all right, woman worship, you see, worshiping all these different uh, uh, particular, uh, you know, left-handed, you know, holy days, which they call them holidays. All right, but this is all idolatry. Yeah, this is all idolatry, man. But this is what was, uh, this is what is a part of the curses that, that the Israelites will be doing in the last days, man. Go ahead. It says, uh, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, mm -hmm. even wood and stone. Yep. So uh, we get that in Tobit now. Oh, uh, John. So like it, John. This is, uh, John 7 and 35. It says, Then said the Jews among themselves, Whether shall he go? Whether will he go? That that we shall not find him. Will he go into the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? Right. Can we get that word dispersed? Yeah. 
like Strong's uh, G1290, the diaspora, diaspora, or they say the scattering, dispersed. Yeah, what does that sound like? Disperse. You know, diaspora, disperse. Disperse means to, to, to let go, all right, to, to loosen. All right, to scatter, you got it, bro. It says of Israelites dispersed among foreign nations. See, it says of Israelites dispersed or scattered amongst foreign nations, man. <laughs> all right, so this is who, you know, the beloved apostle Paul was sent, all right, as an, as a, as an apostle by Yahweh Shah himself, all right, to go preach unto. These are the heathens that he was speaking unto, preaching unto. These are the Greeks, all right, the Romans that, that uh, the apostle Paul was speaking unto, man. Which are like, which are who? Israelite foreigners, man. Which in these times, we're all Israelite foreigners. All right, we were all found in an uncircumcised state of mind. Some, some of us physically uncircumcised, all right? You know, caught up, as we stated earlier, caught up in these particular different religions and philosophies, ideologies, practicing these different holidays, man. This is how we became uh, uh, Gentiles, man. Jay called himself Americans, all right? Blacks, Latinos. Hispanics, Native Americans. This is not that's not that's not the culture, that's not the heritage that the Lord gave us, man. You got it up. Um it says of Christians scattered abroad among the Gentiles. It says um, And the true Christians, the, uh, the true Mashiachim, because that word Christian, all right, means anointed one. The true anointed ones are those, all right, which are the Israelites, the saints. All right, which the saints in the Hebrew that's uh Kodashim. All right, which means the set apart ones, the holy ones, those that came into sacrifice with the heavenly Father at Mount Sinai. You see, which in these times the true saints, all right, are the elect of the nation of Israel, the ones that separated from this world by this truth that Yahweh Shah has given unto them. If you got it, up. It says uh, Strong's definition: dispersion, i.e., especially and concretely, the converted Israelites resident. The converted Israelite resident in Gentile countries. See, the converted Israelites; those are the converts, man. Can't no Edomite be converted into this truth? All right. Can we look up that word convert? No. And I know uh, the beloved elder apostle of Ramlah goes to this word often, man. You got it. All right. It's a Google definition of convert. It says to cause to change in form, character, or function. Yeah, to cause to change in form. Hey, just uh, that's Jeremiah 13, 23. Can an Ethiopian change his skin? Can a leopard change his spots? Neither can you change who are accustomed to do evil. So can't no either might be no convert, man. Right? The Lord created them to be the wicked. So they're gonna stay the wicked. Alright, Daniel 12 and 10. Alright, for many shall be purified and made white. Alright, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. You see? The only ones that are gonna convert, right, are the elect. They're gonna convert from being all right, uncircumcised in the spirit, in the mind. All right, they're going to convert from being filthy. All right, and they're going to convert to, to coming to this truth, man. That's ultimately what conversion means, is to come into the truth. You got it up. Right? It says to change one's religious faith or other beliefs. A person who has, who has been persuaded to change their religious faith and other beliefs. Yeah. And that persuasion is ultimately, you know, through the force of uh, faith, through the gift of faith, man. Which, uh, let's grab a Wisdom of Solomon, third chapter. Now, I want to say like the eighth and ninth verse. It says the special gift of faith. And whatever you got, bro. Right. You said three? Wisdom of Solomon. Yeah, Wisdom of Solomon three and, uh, let me see. Wisdom of Solomon three uh, and 14. Wisdom of Solomon three and 14. And blessed is the unit, which is... Uh, which with his hands have brought no iniquity, no imagined wicked things against the Most High. Mm -hmm. Unto him shall be given the special gift. Yeah. Can you speak and read again, Mark? Sure. Wisdom of Solomon 14, I mean, Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 14, and blessed is the eunuch. Blessed is the eunuch. Now, you have different types of eunuchs. You have some, like Yahweh Shah said, you have some all right, this, uh, that have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom's sake. All right, you have some that was uh, uh, you know, born eunuchs, and you have some that made themselves eunuchs you know, on the behalf of, you know, uh, you know, serving in the palace, you know, in the spirit, we're eunuchs. All right. <laughs> all right. Because we're undefiled with women in the spirit, man. These particular other uh, philosophies, man, as said, that was to befall the elect. How they're going to be virgins, man, unspotted with women. 
So this unit that is speaking about here is speaking about his code for the elect. You got it out. It says, which with his hands have brought no iniquity nor imagined wicked things against the Most High. Uh -huh. For unto him shall be given the special gift of faith. For unto him shall be given the unto the elect shall be given the special gift of faith. You see, now is a gift given to everybody? No. <laughs> All right, this gift is given only to, un only unto the elect. All right, and that gift is what you know causes us to uh, to fear. All right, and move in obedience unto Yahweh Bashvah Shah, just as Noah did. You got it out. Let me see. And how does faith? How does Scripture say that faith is going to come? All right, by preaching His word. Romans the tenth chapter. As a matter of fact, why you why you getting that? Okay. You got it. Okay, you got Second it. Timothy chapter two, uh, chapter one, and I'll start at verse eight. And I'm reading the uh, what is this? MSG. It says. Yeah, I'm gonna start at eight because I don't got no number on it. It says, "So don't don't be embarrassed to speak up for your for our master or for me, his prisoner. Take your share of suffering for the message along with the rest of us. We can we can only keep on going after all by the power of the Most High who who first saved us and then called us to His holy work. To this holy work, we had nothing to do with it. Is the point? We had nothing to do with it. It was all His idea, a gift prepared." For us and Yahweh Shah long before we knew anything about it. But we know it now, since the appearance of our Savior, nothing could be uh, planned. That's the point, like, like we just read in Wisdom of Solomon, how this, this, this faith is a gift, man. You know what I'm saying? It was, and it was given unto the, uh, the elect, you know what I'm saying, in the womb, like it says in the book of Sirach. You know, this, this, is a, this is a gift, man. It ain't nothing we did to obtain it. You know what I'm saying? It's something that goes back into that predestination, man. You see? But jumping back to that Wisdom of Solomon, uh, Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 14 again it says, and blessed is a eunuch uh, which had uh, with which which it's like which with his hands have wrought no iniquity, nor imagined wicked things against the most high. Meaning their works are gonna be pure. The elect ain't gonna be here, all right, working abominable works. All right. Willfully breaking the commands of Yahweh Bashim al Shah, committing adultery, all right, eating abominable foods, all right. Just totally walking in the flesh. The elect ain't going to be doing that. Why? Because they're going to be mortifying their members upon the earth, as it says in Colossians, the third chapter. You got it out. Come on, it says, Nor imagine wicked things against the Most High, for unto him shall be given the special gift of faith and inheritance in the temple of the Lord. And this proves that we have nothing to do with it, man. Once again, if a gift is given unto you, all right, first and foremost, you weren't expecting it, all right? And secondly, right, it's out of your power. You can't tell somebody to give a gift unto you, all right? They, they willfully give it unto you, all right? And as the, as the preachers read that in 2 Timothy, the first chapter, all right, it was given unto us, all right, before the, it was predestinated for us to get it before the foundation of the world, all right? So, you know, we just pray, I hope that we that we uh, keep it, man. Like Yahweh Shah told us, man, hold that fast to what you have. And what, what have we been given? The gift of faith. You got it, out. Huh? It says in an, in an inheritance, in the temple of the Lord, more acceptable to his mind. Right, and an inheritance in the temple of the Lord, man. That's the Lord making those elect men, the governing body, all right, those pillars in the sanctuary. Revelation 3 and 12, to him that overcometh, all right, to him will I make, all right, to, uh, we could get that, I'll get it real quick. This is Revelation chapter 3 and verse 12. Him that overcometh, and what's, <laughs> what are we trying to overcome? We're overcoming all right, the, this whole beast system, man. The beast, his image, his mark, his name, his number. All right, everything that this wicked world, all right, uh, stands for. This is what we're trying to overcome. All right, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim al It says, him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my power. Now, what's the purpose of a pillar? All right, it's to hold fast, all right, a building. You see, it's to hold the weight, all right, of, of, a, of a building, man. It's to be the foundation, you see, and that's going to be the role in lot. All right, of the governing body, man. Those that overcome, the Lord's going to have them to have a very important position, all right, in the kingdom of heaven, man. All right, it says, just like in these times, like you have something called the pillars of society, you know, your policemen, your firemen, mm -hmm. all right, your, you know, your, your army personnel, your mayor, your governor, all right, they're the ones that, that, that hold society together. So that's how it's going to be, right, on, uh, on the behalf of, of course, your Howard Shah, because he's the chief cornerstone, all right, and also the elect, man. That's hewn after his image, that's hewn after his shape. They're going to be the, uh, the pillars in the kingdom of heaven. So it says, I, 
To him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my power. And he shall go no more out. Yeah, we're not going to leave anymore, man. <laughs> All right, like Adam. Where Adam, he was thrust out, right, of the garden. You see, he was thrust out of that, out of that sanctuary, man. It says, and I will write upon him the name of my power. You're, we're going to be given the meaning and authority in the name of Yahweh Bashem al -Shai. It says, and the name of the city of my power, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my power, and I will write upon him my new name. See? You got it out. So, what you want? You want to go back to that wisdom topic? Yeah, we'll finish that out, and then we'll kind of switch gears a little bit. Uh, second and seven, or whatever you got, you know? All right, uh, just back in Wisdom of Solomon, uh, chapter 3, in verse 15, it says, For glorious is the fruit of the good of good labors, and the root of wisdom shall never fa uh, fall away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, is that, was that it on the yeah, 14th? Okay, uh, you mind grabbing Second Ezra seven, yeah. and uh, we'll get uh, we'll start at verse thirty three or thirty two. Thirty two, yeah. Uh, Second Ezra chapter seven and verse thirty two. All right, and it says, "And the earth shall restore those that are asleep in her, and so shall the dust those that are dwell in silence, and the secret places shall deliver those souls that were committed unto them." Yo, you mind reading again, Second Ezra seven and thirty two. It says, and the earth shall restore those that are asleep in her. Right, and we're about to witness this, man. Our particular believers that's, that's, that's uh, you know, that, that went down to the grave. Well, the Lord's about to restore them, man. As uh, as Apostle Paul told us in, uh, what is that, 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter? He says, don't weep, all right, like others. For those that have died at Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah, all right, we're going to meet them in the clouds. You see? Go ahead. It says, so shall the dust... Uh, and so shall the dust those that dwell in silence and the secret places shall deliver those souls that were committed unto them yeah those secret places speaking about the grave shower all right or hell all right that's that's what hell really is man is the grave all right shower all in the hebrew go ahead uh verse 33 it says and the most high shall appear upon the seat of judgment mm -hmm. and misery shall and who did who did the most high give his judgment to John, as a matter of fact, because this directly links up with John the fifth chapter, all right, because um, it also speaks about how Yahweh Shah is going to quicken, all right, the believers upon his arrival, just like when Yahweh Shah, um, when Yahweh Shah gave up the ghost upon the cross, or well, what happened? Many, many uh, Israelites were, I believe it was like, what was it, like five hundred or five thousand? They were resurrected. Yeah. You said John five. Yeah, John five and. Uh, Let's start at verse, uh, let's start at verse 20. 20. Yeah, we can read on down to like, uh, 25. 20. Yeah, yeah, 25, yep. All right, this, uh, John chapter 5 and verse 20. It says, For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that, that himself doeth. And he will show, that he will show him greater works than these that he may marvel. Yeah, because, man, Yahweh shall, of course, he knows things that... <laughs> All right, we would never know, all right, because a hey, daily was he the most high of the light. You read that in Proverbs the eighth chapter, man. And the heavenly Father has given His Son Yahweh Shah preeminence over everything and everyone. All right, He's given him, uh, given unto him all power, man. You see? Go ahead. Okay. okay. So, Rob, so Rob one and ten in the GNT, it says He gave some some measure of wisdom to He gave some measure of wisdom to everyone. But pour her out upon those who love him. Ooh. Well, he, he, he wasn't given the spirit of measure. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he was <laughs> he was given it in full, you know what I'm saying? He was given that uh that that you know what I'm saying, that uh, uh that full amount, man. He was able to tap into that that full amount. It wasn't given unto him in, like you know what I'm saying, like amongst us, giving it to measure. Different brothers have uh, you know what I'm saying, particular measures. You see, Howashai had the full spirit, man. You see, that's why he was able to do the things he was doing and you know what I'm saying? Read minds, be able to you know perceive people's thoughts. Yeah, you see, because he was tapping in straight. He it wasn't it wasn't given unto him to measure. It was given unto him. He he can tap into that whole that whole thing, man. All right, but jumping back, it makes to, sense because he came directly from the Father, man. Yep. <laughs> he was the Father's first and only creation. You know, wrap your mind around that. So of course, all right, he's tapped into you know uh, uh, information. All right, you know that that we will never have possession of even even in the kingdom, man. All right, which we don't need to know, you know? Oh, you got something else? Yeah, real quick, bro. This is uh, 
So Rock chapter 3 and verse 22 in the GNT. Concentrate on the law which has been given unto you. And the law is more than just 613 commandments, which that's a part of it. Yeah. All right, definitely. All right, but the law is ultimately walking in the spirit, man, following Yahweh Shai. All right, being, being humble. All right, preferring one another before yourself. Go ahead. It says, you do, you do not need to know about things which the Lord has not revealed. Yeah, we don't need to know exactly all the inner workings within the chariot, man. All right, our fight is just to get out of here. You see? See, that's why the scriptures say we know in part and prophesy in part. Mm -hmm. You see, Jake be, you know what I'm saying, too caught up on shit that, you know what I'm saying, you don't need to even be worrying about right now. You see, Yahweh gave us everything that we needed to know. He gave us everything that we needed to know to obtain salvation. That's what you need to be focusing on, man. You see, not other things. How much far away? Not all this other shit, man. You see, Jake just, you know what I'm saying, just, just stupid arguments that don't lead to salvation. Mm -hmm. You see that Jake is worried about, man. But like I said, I'm going to continue reading if you ain't got nothing, bro. And you got it says, you don't need to know about the things which the Lord has not revealed. So don't concern yourself with them. After all, what has been shown to you is beyond human power to understand. Ooh. The things that, that's already been revealed unto us are right, through the Holy Spirit. Bro, <laughs> like, just case in point, just knowing who Esau Edom is, man. Yeah. That's power. Think about, yeah, that's power, man. How many people, okay, you, you walk past every day, all right, know who Esau Edom is, the man of sin. They know what the Karagma is about. All right? Bro, so what's being shown unto us, man, this is directly from the heavens. This is angelic information we've been given. You know? But Jacob, once again, Jacob's not complete. He's not pleased with the manna. He's not content with the manna. You see? And what, what does manna mean? What is this? That's what it means. What is it? All right? And that's what that's that's the that's the mindset Jacob has towards his truth. What is this? You know, they want something else. They want to tap into Esau's all right, strange and bugged out philosophies. Things that 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 you know that, that make the hairs upon your upon your skin you know crawl, man. You know, stand up. They they want to hear smooth things, man. All right, they want to hear things that you know that uh, uh that excites them. But this truth is hey, this truth is showing all right to uh um, to be a burden to a lot of you Israelites, man. That's why y'all switching up the doctrine. All right, saying that Esau is the so-called white man. Y'all switching. Y'all trying to change the names, but you can't change the name. All right, but they they're, they're preaching new names, man. All right, or they're preaching in, in the name of Jesus, man, because Jacob's not content. All right, but yet the things that the Lord has already revealed them to us, that's what we need to master. You see, go ahead. I oh, worry if we got another, bro. You had mentioned, uh, damn, we just told you the name, man. So let's see. Okay, this real quick. Chapter 3, verse 1, in the GNT. Undisciplined people find wisdom demand too hard. And don't have enough determination to meet them. Because you had mentioned that about, you know what I'm saying? You know, Jake worrying about this, you know what I'm saying? Just stupid shit, man. You know what I'm saying? When what the Lord blessed us with the note, you know what I'm saying? That's enough. That's going to be enough for the elect, man. You see, this gift that the Lord has bestowed unto the elect, man, they're going to see that, that this is this is power in itself, man. This is this is enough, you know what I'm saying? Everything will be unlocked in the kingdom. The elect is not going to be worried about that, man. You see, particularly, you know what I'm saying? The, the Israel, because they're going to know. All the rest of this, what we know now is going to lead to our salvation. All, everything else will be unlocked in the kingdom, man. So they're going to be focused on what the Lord, that gift that the Lord gave them, man. It's not enough. It's like if you go, you give your child a gift. Hell yeah, but what the rest of the shit? Yeah. And they said, you know what I mean? Well, what about this? And like, damn, nigga, you ungrateful ass little nigga. You know? That's Jake, man. You know? But going back into this, uh, real quick, let me go back to this, uh, this is a rock three. So rock chapter three and verse 23 uh, in the GNT. It says, so don't be, cause don't, do not concern yourself with them. After all, what has been shown to you is beyond human power to understand. Mm -hmm. And that's why when you go into that word, I think that that definition of the word, the mysteries, a mysterion, it goes to not, not giving unto the, uh, 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 yeah, of ordinary mortals, man. You see, that's this, this, what the Lord has bestowed unto us is beyond human power of understanding, man. You see, this is high level power, uh, knowledge straight from the, just falling down straight from the throne, man. You see, and it's been given unto us in, Everybody's not going to understand that, bro. You see, we have something special. That's why it's a gift, man. He, like, like the brother said, knowing who Esau is, you know what I'm saying? Knowing what, like, knowing the Yahweh by Shemiah was shot name. You know knowing who saying? the 12 tribes are. Yeah. You know, Jake think that uh, that the 12 tribe chart, that's a that's a figment of man's imagination. You know? No, bro, that, hey, that came from the heavens. 
All right, that was prophesied about Ezekiel the 37 chapter. Mm -hmm. Now, Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom, they'll be up on that, that one plank, that one stab, that one stick, man. All right? You got it, bro. Okay. So, but that, that in and of itself is a miracle, man. Yep. And we see, all right, we see, and we see all 12 tribes, you know, of, you know, particularly elect members, or hopefully elect members standing up on their feet with great boldness, man. Right. Particular men, no, yeah, particular men standing up throughout the whole earth. All right, prophesying the downfall of this place. You see, where was it prophesied that in the lat in the latter days heathens will stand up, exactly. all right, and prophesy the name of Yahweh Bashem mm -hmm. You see, and this is what's bugging out the elites, bugging out these Christians, bugging out vocab Malone. Yes, bro. You know, and it's completely confounding them, man. Yeah. Oh, so the Hebrew Israelism has found itself in, in France. You know. Yes, that's why we open up with the scriptures and speaking about Israelites being scattered across the four corners of the earth, man. Yeah. Hey, that's why that nigga did. He, what did you say? He said talking about the word. What is it saying in, the, in, the, in prophecy that the Israelite will? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like identify the, themselves. Something like that. Like that. Us standing back on our feet. That's that sign, bro. You see the Lord. The scriptures say that, man. You know what I'm saying? If you're falling away, but then in the end time, the Lord will. He will breathe that breath. Uh, Ezekiel was that? Ezekiel 30, 37. 37. Yep. Revelation chapter 11. You see Baruch. Uh, what is that? Baruch 2. two yep. You see this? That's prophecy dealing with the end time when he, when that knowledge will be bestowed back unto the Israelites, man. You see. So what is this? This, this that, that, that's, that that's hey. Well, we just read this a lot. It's beyond human uh, uh, human understanding. That yeah. nigga's a human, man. Yeah. He, he hasn't been given this knowledge, man. He a, he a fucking heathen anyway, man. You see, but he hasn't been given this understanding to 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 see it, man. You see, everybody ain't got eyes to see, man. Even even Jake who know that they Israelites, man. They it's, it's niggas that know that they Israelites. It's really and they're still not in the truth, man. You see, because there's only one truth, man. You know. All these jakes out here talking about, you know, with these different, you breaking, breaking the scriptures down. You know what I'm saying? Saying the MOTB is not the, uh, not the uh, Karagma. You see, these particular saying Esau is not the so-called white man. But them niggas know that they Israelites. Yeah. They ain't, them niggas ain't got the truth. They just know that they Israelites, man. You see, they ain't got that breath, man. That breath goes back into their wisdom when you read in, uh, what is that? I think it's either Sirach or either Wisdom or Solomon. Wisdom Solomon 725. Yeah. yeah, going into, yeah, that, that she is the breath, man. She is that, that wisdom is their breath, man. You see, and the Lord has bestowed that breathe, breathe that breath back into that dead body, man. And that's why, like the brother said, these, the Esau is, is doing the shit that he's doing. That's why vocab is bugging out. You see, going over there to, to, to Europe, you know, the, the Hebrew Israelism, because this nigga is scared, man. You see, Ephesians man. four and five. Yeah, well, I was about to say, man, what what's happening right now, you know, is is monumental, <laughs> you know, because we haven't been united, all right, with the Northern Kingdom since, bro, like thousands of years ago. Since the time of you know King uh, King Solomon's transgression, man. Since the kingdom been split, you know, and ultimately when you know when the northern kingdom you know got plucked up by the Assyrians, you know, taken into their land and then you know scattered over here to the Americas to Arsuri, as prophesied in Second Genesis thirteen, you know. So, bro, this is this is monumental, man. And the Lord put put both kingdoms, northern kingdom and southern kingdom, here in his in his final captivity in Babylon the Great, the land of the north. All right, Jeremiah the third chapter. All right, speaks about how out the land of the north, northern kingdom and southern kingdom, all right, is going to walk out together, man. All right, that's the elect that is, you know. So what's happening amongst, you know, it, within this body, within this circle of belief, man? All right, it's huge, you know. So this is why, you know, hey, man, this truth is not to be taken lightly. All right, go ahead. Ephesians four and four. There is one body and one spirit. Yeah, because Yahweh Shah is not divided, man. First and foremost, he's not right. His his true believers, they they they're united, right, in his name. All right, ain't no elect members calling upon Yahushua or Jesus. Yeah. All right, they're all calling upon Yahweh Shah. He's not divided, man. Sirach seventeen and ten says, "For the elect shall praise his holy name." Go ahead. Even as you are called in one hope. Of Even the as call. you are called, can we grab that word "called" real quick? You know, now we've been called, all right, clearly. All right, if you if you tune in, all right, you, you listen to the lessons, all right, you believe, all right, we've been called, all right? Our hope and faith is that we'll, we'll be chosen, all right? Eclectos, right? The elect, man. That word call, Strong's G2564, Kaleo, it says to call, to call an example, to name, to receive the name of, Come on, to receive the name of. Dang. You can't go, you can't get around it, man. <laughs> so those that's been called, they receive the names of Yahweh Wah Yahweh Shah. Alright? You gotta what do Yahweh Shah say? My sheep hear my voice. 
and they know me and I know them. You got it up. It says to receive the name of receive as a name. Mm. Mm -hmm. To give some name to one, call his name. Yep, and we've been given a name. Ultimately, once after we overcome, as we read earlier in Revelation 3 and 12, mm -hmm. to those that overcome, we're going to be given a new name. All right, we're going to be given, of course, you know, actual, you know, different names. But ultimately, what comes with those names is authority. All right, a nomen omen, a name prediction, just like Yahweh Shah, all right, his name, all right, Yahweh Shah, meaning he delivers, he saves. But each elect, well, every other life, the star with the elect, they're going to be given a new name. And based upon their names, that's going to be pretty much what their role in lot is going to be, man. You know? Just like Joshua, all right, our forefather Joshua in the ancient world, which his name was Yahweh Shah. All right, he saves or he delivers. All right, his original name was Hosea, all right, which means salvation. But then Moses changed it to, uh, uh, you know, Yahweh Shah, all right? Which that, was a name, that was a name prediction for what he was supposed to do, all right, for the children of Israel. Bring us into the promised land. Save us from my enemies. Bring us into the promised land. But you got it, bro. Mm -hmm. okay. Revelation 2 and 17. And he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give... Will I give to eat of the hidden manna, mm. and give him a white stone, and then the white stone a new, and then the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth save he that received it. Just back your point about that name, that rank. You know what I'm saying? The actual name of brothers getting gonna get their actual. You know, the Lord willing, we are those those spirits, man. You see, that was with the Alahayim with your, with, with Yahweh Shai in the beginning, man. Before you know that was creating the earth, man. You see those names that they had. They're gonna get those names back, and with those, like the brother said, with those, with them receiving them, the old name back, it's gonna come their position of a uh, rank, man. You see, under your house shot. All right, that's coming back, man. Mm -hmm. yeah, bro. Yeah. Ephesians four and five: one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Yeah, it says one Lord. All right, <laughs> meaning he's not divided. It says one faith. All right, one faith, man. So this belief system of ours, of the elect. All right, it ain't divided, man. All right. You ain't got half the elect believing in the 12 tribes chart, the other half, all right, you know, not, you know. Like we stated earlier, you know, one half calling on Jesus. No, man, they're going to be united, all right, in their mindset. All right, 1 Corinthians, the, uh, I believe, what, what is that? 1 Corinthians 1, Paul says, uh, you know, that you all speak the same things. All right, that's that new song. All right, and, and only the elect know that new song. They're all singing on the same tune. All right, that same harmony that you got it. It says, one power and father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. Right. Yeah, that's the point. So, uh, what were you holding up? Uh, I got the John. Y'all just take the John. Okay, kind. You'll go back to that. All right, John chapter 5 and verse 20, uh, 21. It says, for as the father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth, and quickeneth them, even so the son quickeneth whom he will. It says, even so, meaning the son does as well. And who gave the son, who gave you how shot that power, man? The Heavenly Father. Go ahead. And that includes, right, before, before this, this, this the physical resurrection is going to take place, all right, it started with the spiritual resurrection, man. You see? So, hey, we didn't bring ourselves back to spiritual life. Hey, that was Yahweh Shah, because we were all in the congregation of the dead. All right, so Yahweh Shah is the reason why, all right, we're, we're alive, man. All right, in the spirit. Ephesians 2 and 1. For you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses. You see? You got it, bro. Uh, verse 20, uh, 22. It says, For the Father judgeth no man, but he hath committed all judgment unto the Son. For the Father judgeth no man, all right, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, man. So all the judgments that we've seen happen upon the earth, all right, the judgment that's, that's going to continue to happen, all right, all the way up into the, into the future, man, and Yahweh shall behind it all. You see, and Yahweh and, and the Heavenly Father gave that uh, position to him, gave him that authority. Matthew the twentieth chapter, you know, for for uh, for um, how's it go? For all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. You got it. Verse twenty three it says that all men should honor honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. Even as meaning in the same fashion, man. <laughs> all right, meaning you're supposed to worship Yahweh Shah. You see, just as you worship the Most High, you're supposed to worship. All right, Yahweh Shah, which. That's the only way you can worship the Most High. Because the Most High ain't dealing with us, man. All right, you got to go through that mediator, the high priest. All right? That's why we're supposed to be kissing the sun unless he be angry, man. You got it? It says, He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. Mm -hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come unto condemna uh, condemnation. Yeah, and that's, once again, the elect that has that one faith and one baptism, being baptized in this doctrine, all right, being submersed, all right, in the waters of this word. You see? Those are the ones that's not going to be condemned, all right, unto death. That's not going to be, all right, thrown into, uh, all right, this, uh, this lake of fire, the second death, man. All right, go ahead. It says, but it's passed from death unto life. But it's passed from death unto life. Now, if we could go back to uh, 2nd Ezra 7. Was that, you stopped at 25? No, no, I don't know. Okay, God. Verse 25, verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. Yeah, yeah, that's what we want. Yeah. <laughs> yep. They that hear shall live. Mm -hmm. And they that hear, as we was going to earlier, man, hey, my sheep hear my voice, and they know me, and, I, and I'm known of them. Can you read again? Uh, John uh, 5 and 25, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Yeah, and this is, once again, starting the spirit. All right, but it's going to extend all the way down into the physical, man. All right, the ones that's physically dead. All right, the particular believers that, that passed on into the spiritual world. All right, and it's, uh, Revelation 6 chapter speaks about all right, uh, how you have those uh, the, the, the souls of them that were slain, all right, underneath the altar, man, pleading day and night, all right, asking the Heavenly Father, or asking you how about your shower, when you're going to avenge us, you know? And the Lord's going to avenge his saints, all those that's, that's been, uh, you know, slain up on this side, those that's going to give up their, their lives as martyrs, all right, and the ones that's passed on now, you know, particular, you know, uh, elders of ours, apostles of ours, well, not apostles, but, you know, you know, the, uh, the teachers of our elders and apostles, man, you know, uh, Elder High Priest Abba Bivens, all right, King Masha, all right, those particular holy men will, hey, whoever the Lord sees fit, he's going to resurrect them, man. Mm -hmm. You got it? Uh, we'll jump to uh, second Edges. Yeah, second Edges, yep. All right, back in second Edges, chapter 7, uh, what do we leave on? 30, leave on 33? Yeah, 33. All right, second Edges, chapter 7, and verse 33, it says, And the Most High shall appear upon the seat of judgment, and misery shall pass away, and the long suffering shall have no shall have an end. Now, what's that misery that's going to pass away? The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And who's who's spearheading this death, man? Esau Edom. All right? That's that misery that's going to pass away. The Lord's going to wipe away all tears, all right, from, from his elect's eyes, man. Revelation the seventh chapter. Go ahead. 34, verse 34, but judgment only shall uh, remain, true shall stand. But judgment only shall remain. That's what's coming, that's what, that's what the Lord is coming back to do, man. All right, to judge, right, this world that he created, uh, Revelation 19 11. Can we grab that real quick? You know? And that's what we see being gathered together or uh, gearing up together right now with these particular uh, heathen nations. All right, the Lord uh, gathering them together. All right, over there in the Middle East, in the Persian Gulf and Euphrates, which the Euphrates is bone dry, by the way. All right, a lot of people forgot about that, man. All right, but why? That's the Lord about to uh, uh, fulfill Joel the third chapter. Yep. So judgment only is what's going to stand, man. Because for a long time, judgment right, has not been going out in this wicked ass uh, society, man. Mm -hmm. But that's what the throne of David is going to be established upon. Isaiah the 16th chapter, Isaiah the 9th chapter. All right, go ahead. Revelation 19 and 11, and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. That's a lot, bro. That's a lot in that verse. He says, behold, I saw heaven open. So this is pretty much, all right, the, uh, you know, uh, John the Revelator receiving a vision, all right, of the spiritual world, all right, one realm coming, entering into another realm, mm -hmm. as it says in 2nd Ezra 13 chapter, <laughs> all right, the, the physical, all right, this, this 3D, as we know, is coming in contact with 4D, all right, the fourth dimension. Can you read again, Bob? Uh, Revelation chapter 19 and verse 11, and I saw heaven open. And behold, a white horse. And behold, a white horse. Where else can we read about that white horse? Revelation the sixth chapter. Mm -hmm. All right, him that sat on him was was faithful and true. All right, and uh, uh I was like, you know, that's actually that verse. But it speaks about Yahweh shop on that white horse going forth to conquer, man. You see, which is that fathership. Go ahead. Con, it says. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, mm -hmm. and in righteousness he doeth judge and make and make war. In righteousness, right? 
he judges and makes war. All right, now what's what's going to be the standard that Yahweh Shah is going to judge in? What's is he going to be judging by Esau's laws? No, he's going to be judging by all right the laws, statutes, commandments that we find in the scriptures, man. Mm -hmm. Which if you're not covered underneath the blood of Yahweh Shah, all right, well, <laughs> good luck, man. Good luck on fulfilling the law, which no nobody is, man. Not even the elect in the flesh. The only reason why the elect is justified is through Yahweh Shah's righteousness. That's why when you read particular scriptures, what is that? Jeremiah the twenty third chapter speaks about how the house of Israel and the house of Judah shall be saved in those days. All right, um, uh, behold the Lord our righteousness, man. Yahweh Bashmal Shah our righteousness. We want to show you that our salvation is contingent only upon all right Yahweh Shah's righteousness, man. He's the one that came down in the flesh, all right, and fulfilled the law perfectly, man, without sin. All right, feel like you getting something? Uh. I'll keep going, bro. I'll okay. Can we read that from the top? Oh, uh, yeah. Revelation? Yeah. Revelation chapter 11, I mean, chapter 19 and verse 11, it says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doeth judge and make war. Mm -hmm. he, ju he doth judge and make war. See, a vocab will never talk about that. Yeah. You know? Okay, ask vocab. What, what, what is so-called Jesus, all right, which we know that's not his true name. All right, but just you know, on on, on the playing on they playing on they turf. All right, what? Which we not. That's another thing, man. Like the elder, like the, like the apostles say, man. We not here to debate. You know, they've already done that. All right, it's too late in the game for that, man. If you ain't got it, you just ain't got it. All right, the elect is going to get down the program. They're going to be persuaded unto salvation. All right, the right the right arm of the Lord is going to be uh, uh you know uh made revealed unto them. They're going to believe the report. All right, at this point, man. But anyway, what we were saying, all right, yeah, you ask these particular Christians, okay, well, what, what is so-called Jesus going to do when he comes back? You know? They're not going to, they're going to look at you like you got 10 heads. They don't know. All right, this is, hey, they, they pass is not telling them this. All right, vocab not pushing. All right, prophecy. You see? But this is what's been written uh, that's going to come to pass, man. See, how was Shouts going to come here to make war? All right, he's pissed off, man. Yes, and he's coming back. All right, to uh, <laughs> he's coming back for vengeance, man. Psalms one, oh, you got some? Yeah, Psalms one ten. We'll, we'll get that, but you got it, bro. Isaiah sixty six and fifteen. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with the chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by a sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. You see, like the brothers going into man. You know, you ask these particular Christians. Well, what, what is, who the word even calls Jesus Christ? What is he coming back to do? You know what I'm saying? According to the scripture, man, he's coming back to kill. You see? It said that the slain of the Lord shall be many, man. It says the Lord shall plead. It says for by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. Now that pleading, that's not going into please begging. No, that's going into judgment, man. You see? And that's what the Lord is coming back to do, man. He's coming back to kill. You see? And that's something that these people are not expecting. They're not looking for all right, the son of the heavenly father to come back and be a so-called black man with <laughs> and mad. You see, they're looking for Chesy B to crack the clouds, but we, you know, and coming with naked babies, man. You know, this is gonna be some. I think it said in uh, I think it's in Isaiah or Jeremiah said so they did something that they didn't look for. Oh, I got you. You know what I'm saying? Because they're not looking for they're not looking for your Howard shot, man. You see, they're not looking for your Howard shot to come back, man. You see, and when he does, like when it, when Howard shot does come. Like the brother said, that their fourth dimension is going to meet the third dimension, man. You see, we saw, hey, man, when the Lord cracks crack the skies, man, like it said, like we just read in Revelation 19, uh, what is it? Uh, yo, 19, right? Mm -hmm. Yo, 19, and when, uh, like it says in 2nd Ezra chapter 13, where it talks about how it, it calls waves, you know what I'm saying, the sea to go, you know what I'm saying? Oh, the Lord is going to shake this earth, man, when he returns, man. You see? Everything is going to tremble, all right, when the Lord look upon it, man, you know? Isaiah 52 and 15 in the NLT. And he will startle many nations. Kings will stand. You see, he's going to startle they stuff. <laughs> you read about that in uh, uh, Revel uh, Revelations 1. You see, where it talks about, Behold, he coming with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they, and they that see him shall wail, you see, because of him, man. You see, he's going to startle everybody, man. When Yahweh Shah makes his return, it's going to be in the middle of World War III. You see? The scriptures, I mean, you know, you got, that's why you had these particular presidents talking about it. If an outside entity comes, we need to put our uh, differences aside and come together as, as, as humanity and fight. You see? Well, they ain't doing nothing but prepping you people to fight against the Lord, man. And they, they bring the draft back, and you niggas are about to get drafted, 
All right, you niggas gonna get killed in that war, and ultimately, the, the niggas that, that make it up to your house shall return, you gonna get your ass burnt and burnt up the powder, man. You see? And that word startle, Google definition says, cause a person to feel sudden shock or alarm. Mm -hmm. It's that thief in the night. Yeah, you, you know, seeing something, seeing something you ain't never seen before, that's gonna put fear in these people. In the fashion that Yahweh Shah is coming back to, Yahweh Shah is gonna shut, he's gonna stop the world. Everything is gonna look at him, man, when he comes back. He, everything is gonna be drawn to the heavens when Yahweh Shah cracked them clouds, man. You see, because it's gonna be loud, you know what I'm saying? He'll Jake, he gonna come, and he's coming back in fashion, man. He's coming back with the, with the whole army of the heavens, man. Hey, scripture says in Habakkuk, the third chapter, he's going to invade them with his troops. Mm. So what the world thinks about an alien invasion, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. hey, how is y'all going to flood? Bro, imagine that, bro. You got you got the spiritual world flooding this place with, with your how is and the angels, bro? Like, <laughs> you mean yeah. to tell me, you know, people were still going to be, you know, but that goes to show you, man, how, how reprobate these people are, because even in the midst of that, Hey, what does Revelation the sixth chapter say? For all this, they're still not going to repent. Mm -hmm. So that goes to show you how far gone you people are, man. Starting with the, starting with the elite banking family, man. Right. They're going to be scared shitless, but still, you know, still uh, uh, hard-hearted yep. towards the Lord, man. Yep. That's right. It says, Isaiah 52 and 15 in the NLT, And he will startle many nations. Kings will stand speechless in his presence. Mm -hmm. For they will see what they had not been told. They will understand what they had not heard about. Yeah, they gonna understand then. You see, with those messages, with those men that's on the highways and byways been proclaiming, they gonna understand then, man. Vocab is gonna understand then. You see, the Lord is gonna make it plain and clear who He is when He comes back. Man. So you people are not gonna have no fucking cloaks, man. You, everybody's gonna know that's your house shot. Yeah. You see, He's gonna make it known. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, it said that they, uh, it said, for they will see what they had not been told. Now, we're telling you that he's coming, but as far as the particular details, mm -hmm. we don't know. Yeah. So, <laughs> a particular thing that we don't know, like, hey, even the elect, uh, Revelation 11 chapter speaks yeah. about how the elect is going to be a frightened, man. Mm -hmm. You know? Bro, y'all shot about to scare everybody shitless, man. Bro, and they're going to be in new bodies. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to be in a million of new bodies, and they're going to be scared, bro. Mm -hmm. The angels scared. They stand before the Heavenly Father uh, terrified and, and fear, man. They fear the Heavenly Father, man. And they and they and they, and they <laughs> brought in angels, they in angelic bodies, bro. Mm -hmm. They're right there in itself, bro, showing you when their leg get beamed up and changed, bro, what the Lord is going to do to this place, you see the judgment that he's going to bring is going to outdo the flood. It's going to out, outdo any other time of, the, of his works in the earth before, man. Mm -hmm. You see, Sodom and Gomorrah, all right, what he did to Egypt, everything is going to outdo it, man. You see? Yeah, because it's the most wickedest place to ever be existent in, in existence, man. America, Babylon the Great. Another nickname for it is what? Marathion, double rebellion, man. Mm -hmm. So the Lord is going to match this place. No, as a matter of fact, no, he's not going to match it. He's going he's to overdo it. It's going to be overkill, man. Oh, yeah. It's going to be an overkill with 200 million missile warheads at that. Plus, plus fire from the chariots, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, bro, it's going to be a complete overkill, bro. Like the brother said, he's a jake. So whatever he do, he gonna do it to yeah. the back, man. Yep. You know, you know how Jake, you know, you playing basketball, you know, on finals, what they doing? They, they, they spinning behind, doing a ball behind. They just doing the most. Yeah, how was y'all gonna do the most, man? Well, Jake, you know, how, you know, you got the video of the Jake going to prom. They got the outside decked out. Oh, you know what I'm saying? The Jake coming out and shit. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Jake, gonna he? Hey, man, y'all was y'all coming back in fashion, man? Yeah. You see, you he like you said, yeah, I, ain't, I shall not meet thee as a man. You see. Yeah, that's why it says we're not even gonna talk about what he did in Egypt. We're gonna, bro. Now it's not that we're gonna forget about what he did. It's just that what he's about to do in his spiritual Egypt is gonna far outweigh yeah. what he did back then, man. Yeah. So we're gonna be talking about this for all of you. Imagine that. We gonna. That's how. That's how much wrath Yahweh Shah's coming in. We're gonna be talking about what he's about to do in America for all of eternity, man. For those that don't know, our right, eternity means forever. So we're gonna be talking about this forever, bro. Like. <laughs> So this is what we're we're trying to prepare our minds for, which really at the end of the day is just gonna take the Holy Spirit, you know? Because ain't none of us witnessed this before. A time of trouble such as never was since there's a nation. How can you prepare for that in the flesh? Right. You're gonna have to have divine help, man. If the Lord ain't with you, shit. You know, you just you just out of there, man. You know, you got something? Kind of, kind of well, yeah, the brother mentioned that uh, uh how the angels uh, are feared uh, before the Lord. So I'm gonna end it. This is second Edges, uh, chapter eight and verse twenty one. Let me see what 
I'll start at verse 20. This is uh, 2 Ezra 8 and verse 20, and it reads, O Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahshai, thou that dwellest in everlastingness, which beholdest from above things in the heavens and in the air, whose throne is inestimable, whose glory may not be comprehended, before whom the hosts of angels stand with trembling. So like the, the, the Kahan was, was going into, how the angels are in their perfection, man. You know, they're in their, you know what I'm saying? They're in their angelic form. That's perfection, man. And they stand before the Lord a, a, a trembling, man, in fear. But you got Jake down here in, a, in this wicked-ass flesh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, uh, uh, Putin and, 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 you know, you, the, you know what I'm saying? Just mm -hmm. they down here going off, man, you know, thinking they're doing something. So that, and I think I remember bringing this out before, and and and, and the point is more fear, man. You know what I'm saying? Walk with more fear, man. You know what I'm saying? Because like the uh, uh, Khan uh, Al Mawak was going into, man, we're about to come into a time like unlike uh, uh, ever before. Like it says in Daniel the twelfth chapter, we ain't we ain't seen this, we have never seen it before. Although they've done some bad things on the earth, that's baby play uh, compared to what the Lord about to bring, man. So we've never seen it. We're going to see it one time. So that shows you how special it's going to be, man. You know what I'm saying? The Lord is not going to play games, bro. And then after that, the implementation of the kingdom of heaven. So that shows it's going to be very special. It's going to be spectacular. Really can't put a word on it, man. Can't put words on these things. It's going to be a biblical proportion, like, like, like people say. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be something to see, man. You know what I'm saying? So the Lord is about to go all out in this one, man. You know, so it's going to be, it's going to be a sight. But yeah, the, the angels stand before the throne of the Lord with tri uh, trembling, man. Fair. Mm -hmm. And can't nobody uh, uh, try to escape this, man. Everybody's gonna be involuntarily dragged into this, man. Mm -hmm. You know, even you women. All right, that's that's been a hot topic here lately. All right, these women about to be uh, they, the women they just had to uh, or the government. All right, the uh, United States they uh, they got the selective uh, the selective you know draft out. All right, for for the eighteen for the ages eighteen through twenty six. It's twenty six, right? Twenty five, twenty six. Twenty six. Yeah. Yeah. You know, as well as the women, man. Yeah. You know, so the Lord is dragging everybody out, man. Whether you want to, whether you want to be right involved or not, mm -hmm. you see, into Jacob's trouble, man. He's about to pour out his fury upon everybody, man. Mm -hmm. Right? That's not underneath his uh, his protection. But you, well, you got some? Oh uh, yeah, just because you had mentioned it, how we gonna talk about <laughs> we gonna talk about this destruction, what the Lord is gonna do to America and the kingdom, man. This Revelation 19, going back to Revelation 19, and um. I started verse 1, it says, And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven, saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God, for true and righteous are his judgments. But he had judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and had avenged the blood of his, ser his servants at, the hand, at her hands. This is the point. And again they said, Hallelujah, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. See now, now is America gonna burn forever and ever? No. You see, that reminds me of that what it, what it speaks about in the book of Jude, uh, mm -hmm. where it talks about Sodom and Gomorrah. You see that it, talking about that eternal fire. Now, is, is, is uh, Sodom and Gomorrah burning right now? Physically, no. But it's, it's burning spiritually, man. You see, it's a it's a it's a, it's a, it's a it's, you know what I'm saying a memory of a judgment, man. It's still burning until this day in the spirit, man. You see, and that's how America is gonna be, man. You see. Even though once that point in time when it stops actually burning, you know what I'm saying? That memory of his place of burning is going to continue to burn forever, man. You see? And it's going to be, we're going to tell our children, it's going to be spoke about forever and ever, man. A memorial. Yeah, a memorial. That's what a memorial is. It's something to remember, a thing remembered, man. You know what I'm saying? So the, the, the remembrance is going to be there, man. When the Lord finishes with this place, man, that mm -hmm. memory is never going to go away, man. It's going to become, this is going to become a memorial, man. Yep, straight up. Yep. You had something? No, go ahead, God, this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 16. I got that. Uh, you got it, bro. I'll read it for you. Okay, break it down. Okay, God. Yeah. This is Jeremiah, chapter 16, and verse 14. And it reads, Therefore, behold. Hey, so, like, if I can add, that's a prime example of what we read earlier, right? In Ephesians, the fourth chapter. One faith, one hope, one baptism, one Lord, man. All right, because you see how the men of the Lord, we're, we're in sync. Exactly. You know, like, this, bro, these, most. None of these live shows. We don't. We don't really have. We don't have nothing prepared. Right. We hey, the spirit of the Lord just bring us here. All right. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Like hey, what's on your spirit? You know, brother, bring out whatever's upon the spirit. Brother, this ain't scripted, man. Right. Mm -hmm. right. You know. Right. But but yeah, you, how many how many live streams y'all y'all hear? Like, oh man, I had that too. Oh, oh man, that's the spirit. Yes. You right. know, because it's literally that. It's literally the spirit, man. Mm -hmm. that's it. So this is this is that that one faith, that one hope that we we'll speak that we was reading about earlier, man. Yeah. Which he's up. That's that spirit is not in these other groups, man. Exactly. You know, you can, this is why you, even amongst the IUIC, 
All right, you had one camp saying this, one camp saying that they, I was watching the video last week, one camp said, one of the, one of the speakers said, yeah, well, I call on uh, Yahweh Shah whenever I pray. He was talking to an Eve. But then Bishop Nathaniel, you know, he's saying, he's saying a whole different thing. Right. So they're divided, man. Yahweh Shah is not with these other groups, man, not with these other camps, you know? And, you know, just to clarify, it's not a, it's not a camp thing. It's a, it's a truth thing, man. Right. Right. It's all about the truth because you have particular brothers all right, that um, that's a part of us, but they're not. You know, they're a part of us in the spirit, but on the on the roster, on the register, they're not. Right. All right, but this is why you hear the apostles speak about the offshoot camps. All right, the off branch camps, but in the spirit, they're with us, man. What do you how should I say in Matthew the twelfth chapter? He that is not against me is with me, man. Right. You know, but I was going to you know to bring that out, man, because this is this is totally the spirit, man. That's it. A white minded man. Uh. This is Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 14. And it reads, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh Shai, that it shall no more be said, Yahweh Shai liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. But Yahweh Shai liveth, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. Now, uh, did this happen already? No. You had, once again, all right, hey, we, hey, we flipped the script. Because, you know, vocab these particular Christians, they try to come up asking us questions. No, you break this down. When did the children of Israel and the children of Judah all right, get delivered out of the land of the north, man? You see? Where is the land of the north? Has this been fulfilled yet? <laughs> all right? And if so, when? And if not, when is it going to happen? You got it out. It says, and from all the lands whither he, whither he had driven them, and I will bring them again into their land, that I gave it to their fathers. Right, man. So the point is, is that when hey, the, the salvation that Yahweh Shah, Yahweh Shemal Shah is about to uh, work in the spiritual Egypt, pursuant to Revelation 11 and 8, is going to far outdo what he did in ancient Egypt, man. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be the institution of the new Passover. All right? And, and the elect is going to uh, be the first fruits to partake into that, pursuant to Revelation 19 chapter, the marriage supper of the Lamb, man. You see? And we're preparing ourselves for this before... All right, the fierce indignation of the Lord comes forth. Ze uh, Zephaniah, the second chapter. So, so Rob 36 and 6 in the GNT, give new signs, perform new miracles. Mm. Show us your glorious strength. Bring on that appointed time when everyone can talk about the great things you do. Pour out your furious, flaming anger and let none of our enemies survive. Destroy those who have uh, oppressed your people. Crush all those enemy rulers who think they are the only people in the world who matter. Gather the children of Israel together again and give them back their land as you gave it to them long ago. You see, like the brother said, like the brother just read in that Jeremiah, you see how the Lord is, it's no longer going to say how the Lord brought up the children of Israel all right, from the land of Egypt, but, though, but how he brought them up from the north, Brother paraphrase it, man. You see, so all that, that, this new deliverance is going to come with what? New signs, you see, new miracles. You see, because when you read about the deliverance, you know what I'm saying, when it goes into the end time during Jacob's trouble, how the Lord is going to deliver, you know what I'm saying, it's elect. You see, the scriptures talk about receiving spiritual powers, you see, and then what ultimately, that the ultimate salvation is going to be what? The elect being actually beamed up into these ships, man. You see, as a whole, man, now imagine, imagine that that's something that these people ain't seen, man. You see, it was seen in the earth a couple of times back, back before, man, you see. Like with, with Enoch, you know what I'm saying, Elijah, our Lord, Yahweh Shah. You see, well, this time you're going to get the whole elect being beamed up everywhere across the whole planet Earth, man. You see, that's going to be a new sign that ain't never happened before. You know what I'm saying? On, on that type, on that scale, man. You see? Man, you're going to have Leviathan. Oh, you yeah, know, yeah, what yeah, the yeah, Lord yeah. to send out Leviathan against these particularly? No, bro. <laughs> and you're seeing all this shit happening with these sea creatures. All out of beaching themselves. Mm -hmm. That a lot, that, a, uh, that, a, uh, that anomaly that has been picking up on these fucking satellites over there that's coming from Antarctica. Oh, yeah. Up there traveling up there to the, uh, the southern coast of Africa, man. You see? These big ass anomalies, bro. Mm -hmm. So like the brother said, Leviathan, man. You see, the Lord is stirring up. He's stirring up judgment, man. We're about to see new signs. We're about to see a lot of stuff take place on the planet Earth, man. Man, bro. Yo. Got anything up? Yo. I guess we finished out that second of the city. Um, I'm going to go. Yeah. Alright, just going back to uh, Second Entrance chapter 7 Alright, in verse uh, 35 You read 34? 30, 30, okay, yeah, my bad 34 it says, but judgment only shall remain Truth shall stand And faith shall rack strong Yeah, that's what's going to come, man, in the, in the world to come But it's happening now Alright, Second Entrance 6 chapter 
All right, for uh, for truth, which have been so long without fruit, shall be declared. All right, and all the lies and the seed is being quenched, man. All right, so truth is starting to stand. All right, First Ezra the fourth chapter speaks about all right the uh, the strongest things. All right, but then it, it was concluded in saying that what truth is the strongest and that endures forever. So what are these other ones? Once again, what are these other camps talking about when they say that you know uh, we boasting? All right, when we say we got 100% truth, but somebody got to have 100% truth, man. You know, the Lord has preserved, I'm going to get this real quick. The Lord has preserved his truth, all right, unto the, for, for the elect, man. All right, because ultimately truth is really a person, which is Yahweh Shah. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So the truth is always going to be around, man. All right, this is Psalms 117 and uh, verse 2. And it says, uh, it says, for his merciful kindness is great toward us. And the truth of the Lord, Yahweh, by Shema was shot, endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. So the truth endures forever. All right. Now, for once again, for a long time, we went without it. You know, Colossians 1 and 16. All right. The mystery that was hidden from ages, uh, from ages, you know, away from us. But now he's given it to his saints. And like the priest was going into early, expound upon early, man, that's that breath of life that's coming back inside of us. That's the truth. You got it out. It's uh, 2nd Andrew chapter 14 and verse 22 in the GNT. It says, please send your Holy Spirit to me so that I can write down everything that has been done in this world from the beginning, everything that was written in your law. Then in these last days, people will be able to find the right way and obtain life if they want to. Man, what, what is that? 2nd uh, Andrew chapter 14 and verse 22. Can you read it again? Come on. 2nd Andrew chapter 14 and verse 22 in the GNT. Please send me your Holy Spirit. It's so like it says, please send your Holy Spirit to me so that I can write down everything that has been done in this world from the beginning, everything that was written in your law. And who else was that given unto? Moses, man. Mm -hmm. You know, when Moses was supping with, you know, uh, Yahweh Shah on Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, the Lord gave Moses, right, everything that happened from the creation all the way up until the second coming of Yahweh Shah. Mm -hmm. You see? So this is why we believe in the spirit, right? If you can receive it, that, that the prophet Ezra is Moses, man. All right? And that's just one example out of many, you know, that we can go through, you know? But nonetheless, and also the reason why, you know, the prophet Ezra was charged to uh, to, to rewrite these things is because, all right, uh, um, you know, our, our scrolls were burned, you know? So it had to be rewritten. And there's particular things that the, that the, uh, that the spirit... All right, allow you know to uh, to be public, and particular things that the, that the Spirit of the Lord you know uh, uh, had him to, to keep it concealed, man. But you got it out. It says, then in these last days, people will be able to find the right way. Who's those people in the last days that's found the right way, man? Mm -hmm. We are Isaiah the thirtieth chapter. You know, it speaks about how our teacher's not going to stand in the corner anymore, but we're going to hear a word in our ear saying that this is the way walk ye in it, man. So we are literally walking prophecy, man. We're mm -hmm. fulfilling prophecy. It's bigger than us just waking up every day, going to work. Okay, I'm, uh, today is camp day. Okay, today is sit down day. It's bigger than that, man. No, we are we are <laughs> fulfilling prophecy, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish I said in Matthew the 13th chapter, blessed are your eyes for they see, blessed are your ears for they hear. But many righteous men and prophets desire to see those things that you see and have not seen them. But we're the ones that have been blessed. So what a time to be alive, man. You know, this is the generation that Yahweh Shah is going to come in. Hey, hey we, like Elder Apostle Horace said, uh, it was like two years ago. I remember he said, uh, brothers, don't be expecting your sons to grow up in Babylon being prophets like you. It ain't going to happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's stopping with us, man. Lord willing. That's right, willing. You know, you got it out. It says, then in these last days, people will be able to find the right way and obtain life if they want to. Ooh. And ultimately, it's, it's all through predestination, man. Yep. You know? <laughs> you know, uh, you know, we can finish that out and then whatever brothers got, we'll wrap it on up. All right, this back to Second Ezra chapter seven and verse thirty-five. It says, "And the work shall follow, and the it's like, and the work shall follow, and the reward shall be showed." All right, what work is going to follow, and what reward is going to be showed? All right, the works and reward of the elect, Revelation fourteen. Yeah, All right, you got it. You got it. <laughs> This is uh, yeah, Revelation 14 and verse 13. It says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto, unto me, Right blessed are the dead which died in the Lord from his from here henceforth. Yeah, and we don't mourn right over death like people of the world, man. 
You see, Yahweh shall freed us from that bondage. You know, and it's all done through faith, man. And we believe through faith what happens unto an individual once they give up the ghost. Or once the Lord takes the ghost away from you. Takes your spirit, man. All right? Okay. So it's, oh, you got whatever you got. Second Andrew chapter 7 and verse 78 in the GNT. But to answer your question about death, when the Most High has pronounced the final decree that a person shall die, the soul leaves their body to return to the one who gave it. Mm. Immediately it praises the glory of the Most High. See? <laughs> so as you go back to the spirit world, you're praising the Lord. So going back, Revelation 14 and verse 13, it says, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from his henceforth. Yeah, die of faith, man, which is ultimately those martyrs is going to give up their lives, man. You're going to have certain uh, believers, certain brothers and sisters giving up their lives all right, as martyrs because they refuse to take the MOTB. All right. However, the Lord may see fit for us to suffer for his name's sake, man. And of course, you're going to have some that's going to be preserved. All right, all the way up until the coming of our Lord Yahweh Shah. But concerning those who died, you got it? It says, Yea, said the Spirit, they that may rest from their that they may rest from their labors and their work do follow them. Yeah, that's what death is ultimately. It's just rest. You you sleeping. Like Yahweh Shah told uh, Mary in uh, what was that, John the eleventh chapter. He says, uh, uh Lazarus sleep. And I'm like, what you mean he's sleep? No, he's dead. <laughs> he's like, sleep. And then, then he had to just say it plainly, like, okay, you know, like dead you know so that's all death is for a believer man is to sleep all right and reincarnation is biblical man you're gonna come back all right and whatever however you die like if you if you die righteous well then the lord is going to allow he's gonna he's gonna you know uh you know bring your reward in that next lifetime man mm -hmm. you see you got it up come on, going back to uh second Andrew 7 to 35 and the work shall follow and the reward shall be showed and the good deeds shall be a force. And that reward is ultimate salvation, man. And then all the perks that follow, all right, every man is in own order, depending upon whatever rank and position the Lord got you in up in the kingdom of heaven. All right, you got it. It says, and, the, and wicked deeds shall bear no rule. Yeah, wicked deeds are going to bear no more rule, man, because right now wicked deeds bear rule. All right? All this, you know, uh, you know, this, this death culture, man, yep. this is what bears rule in this earth, man. You know, case in point, the month that we in right now, P month, man. This is bare rule. People are literally were looking forward to this month. You know, yeah. they got they they done uh, decorated their whole damn office building for, for P month, man. You see, but in the world to come, all right, all this, this is going to be Isaiah the sixty fifth chapter. The former shall not come into mind, man. The elder world is not going to come to remembrance, man. It's all going to be about what the Lord is doing right then and there. And it's all going to be established upon, all right, uh, righteousness, man. You got it, bro. All right, verse 36, it says, Then said I, Abraham, pray first. Yeah, that's pretty much the point on that. Yep. You got anything? You got anything for that? Uh, yeah, I'll get this real quick. Uh, uh. I get it for you. Uh, yeah, I was looking for one uh, where it was right. Oh, okay. Right. This this is our, is Second Peter. Peter. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. got you. Second Peter 3 and 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth. Yeah, that new heaven and new earth, man. You know what I'm saying? This this is that this is that old that's gonna fade away, man. You know, we're, we're looking for that new, man. You know, the new heavens and the new earth. You know, the, the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked, Job 9, uh, 24, you know, and he's, he's bore rule, uh, uh, he's been bearing rule and, and, and wickedness, man, you know what I'm saying? And the earth is through, you know what I'm saying? So now, you know, the, those righteous spirits, man, that were chosen from, predestinated from the foundation of, of the world, you know, Ephesians, the first chapter, you know, we're, we're tired of this place, man, you know, and we're, we're, we're uh, 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 complaining to the Lord daily, man, you know, to, hey, take this place out, man, you know what I'm saying? We, we ready for for the for the new heavens and the new earth. Go ahead. We're in dwelling righteousness. We're in dwelling righteousness, man. You know that's what we're tired of being wicked. We're tired of living like we what like we have to live. These bodies, man. These bodies are wicked. This flesh is wicked, man. You know, and we're, we're captives in, the, in this flesh, man. We're prisoners, and we're ready. We're ready to be released 
out of uh, uh, our prison sentence, our prison term, man. Go ahead. It says, verse 14, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Mm -hmm. Is that the point? Yeah, it comes. It comes. So, yeah, we're, just, hey, we're tired of this place, man. You know what I'm saying? We're looking for that, uh, uh, like the scriptures say, what's that in Hebrews? We look for, that, here we have no continuous city. We look for that which is to come, man. You know, which is the kingdom of heaven, wherein dwelleth righteousness, man. That's what we long for. We're tired of being wicked, living wickedly, living among these wicked people, man, under this wicked rule, man. You know, we're fed up with this place, man, and we want out, you know. And Lord willing, Yahweh Bashim Yashai hears our cries, man, our prayers, every, you know, hey, we put them up daily, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, Lord willing, he hears us, man, and gets us out of here soon. God. So, yeah, man, so, the brother ain't got nothing else, and we're going to wrap it up. You know, Lord willing, that was edifying. You know, like the, like the preacher's going into, man, we doing this ultimately as a cry out unto our, uh, unto our power, man, Yahweh Bashim Yashai. You know, and we pleading him for, we asking him for mercy. All right, and the Lord's going to come through upon his elect, man. So we just hope and pray that we're part of that number. Uh -huh. All right, but, you know, Lord willing, you know, Abaratazai, you know, you sincere, Akin Wakwaf, for edified. So next time, we want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto. Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Shai, Ba'ashem, Rekapadash. We want to give double honors to our beloved apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Wakwaf, Babal, Shalom, Shalom.